Hey guys, how you doing? This is Osamo here, and I got Paul. What's up, Paul? How's it going, Paul? Hey, brother. All right, guys. Uh, today, how you doing today, brother? We're doing good. Today is uh, Tuesday, and uh, we're just reporting live right now, and uh, let you know how how everything's going down there today. What you got, brother? Well, I like to just pray for everybody. I just, you know, I've noticed in the spirit, even in my own life, I've noticed a stepping up of the evil one uh, coming against many people, and did, whether it be finances, relationships. And, uh, I just want to declare victory over the evil one right now. Father, I just break every de uh, demonic uh, uh, assignment towards anybody out there that would come against them with their finances, relationships. Yes, Lord. And I, Father, I even break it off of myself in the name yes, of Jesus. Anything that's a hindrance between you and I, Lord. And Father, I trust in you. Um, we walk by faith and not by sight. But all my brothers and sisters out there that are, are, are people that are not Christians even, I pray that the Lord would just deliver you from any kind of uh, spirit that would come upon you and make you feel depression, or feel like there's lack in your life, or that you're not needed, or you're not wanted, or that you're not worthy. Spirit of rejection on people right now, I break it off of you right now in the name of Jesus. I speak to rejection. I command you to leave by the blood. And the Lord says, you know, and the Lord just reminded me, brothers, when Jesus went up to, to fast for 40 days and 40 nights, and he showed me, he says, you know, the devil brought him up there. He says, I'll give you all of this, this kingdom. So it's all mine to give. If you only wish, it, Lord, bow down and worship me. And it says, Thou shalt, Jesus' response to, uh, to the evil one, the Satan, was this Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall serve. So we speak this over people right now. We speak this, this word. It is written, hmm. Man shall live by bread alone, but every word that comes out of the mouth of God regarding your finances. Hmm. Father, we just speak wholeness upon everybody out there that needs your help right now, yes. especially with, with people in, in Israel, or people that are hurting, the widow, the orphan the poor. We ask that you bless them. The fighting that's going on in Israel, right? We ask for mercy upon all the, all the people. We ask for the peace of Jerusalem to come back, Lord. The peace of Jerusalem. People, if you don't know what that means, that means the return of Jesus Christ. Yes. And we speak authority. We speak authority over this, Father. We claim it in the name of Jesus. And for all the brothers and sisters out there that are going through bad situations with relationships and not sure about this and unsure sh about that, we break the principality and power off of those people right now. We speak wholeness. We speak Goodness. We speak prosper. We speak uh, uh, an uplifting of heart. We speak joy into them, Lord. We speak that, Lord, that you give them the self confidence they need out there. We ask this in the blood of, in the name of Jesus. We ask for the blood to flow ever. Just one drop from the cross, Lord, upon all your people, whether it be the finances, uh, relationships, anything it would have to do with their lives, Lord. We just ask for mercy and pour the blood into their lives. Lord. Father, I ask for wisdom and discernment upon everybody that's listening right now, that you discern what is the Lord and what is not of the Lord. Yes, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Well, we pray for a in common Jesus spirit. Name. Common spirit. Upon yes, Lord. Yes. Well, letting you know, uh, I always start off with earthquakes, what's happening. And here's a chart of what's happening right now. Uh, <clears throat> looks like a lot of activity happening in the Middle East. As you can see here, there's a lot of activities right here, um, and um, this is this is like uh, toward uh, Afghanistan. Uh, let's see here, Iran, uh, 3.5, and then a lot of little ones there in Turkey, and then uh, more in Turkey's, and I mean a ton of them in Turkey and Greece, and uh, uh, let's see more in Turkey. Look at all that, all of these in, in Turkey, Greece. And um, let's see here, Romania, something's happening there. There's this earthquake there and Italy. And then look at down here, <clears throat> down Ethiopia, um, some activities happening there, 3.8. And then uh, down in, in um, Indonesia, 4.6. Another one in Indonesia, 4.4. Uh, and then right here, uh, Indonesia 4.8 <clears throat> going down here down the line here uh, Vanadu uh, 4 <clears throat> 4.8 and then a few islands of uh, 5.0 and then uh, New Zealand uh, 3.0 and then offshore down in Guam 
uh, 4.8, and there's some uh, volcanic volcanic uh, activity happening here, by the way, and a 4.8 uh, earthquakes right here offshore, and then right here in Japan, 4.4. Um, and uh, looking down to here in the states, let me just change the, uh, <clears throat> the setting on the map here. Uh, you can see the little earthquakes here. Uh, another offshore earthquake down in Oregon, and we were talking about that about a couple weeks ago or about a week ago. There was an offshore earthquake down in Oregon, and there's another one. So something's happening here offshore-wise, and then uh, California as well, the little small ones here, and then Mexico. And then right over here as well, some things are happening down there. But uh, <clears throat> uh, is there anything you want to uh, say, Paul, there? Anything you want to share? I'm just looking at what you're showing us right now. Okay. Just right now. It just seems like that's a little picked up of earthquakes here. Yeah, a lot of them. I mean, these, these look at like a straight line down here, as we can see. All these right here happening. And, and oh, look. Offshore. This just happened, by the way, off of Hawaii, uh, 3.3. Uh, there's a, a ton of them, brother. A ton of them. Look at all that. Wow. And these down here, these are all the big ones right here. 4.5 point uh, happening down here and then Japan here. So not only um, as I talk a little bit on that, a share there, um, is there anything you want to add, brother, before I move on to that? No, go ahead. Okay. Uh, what I want to sh uh, say is that um, there's uh, also activity, not only the earthquakes, but it says volcanic stuff. And I've actually got a video of a live volcano uh, that's happening down in Japan. And that's probably what, what this is happening right here. Because it says Volcano Islands, but there's uh, some activity here. And then Hawaii here, too, just happened. Off of the big island, uh, three point. Um, so something's happening with our volcanoes, and um, can I show that video quick on the volcano? Sure. Okay. Sure. Now, now here's a here's a live uh, volcano that's happening in Japan. See, see that live shot there. This is mm. happening in Japan right now as we speak, and um, there's some uh, volcanic stuff happening down there. And here's the uh, satellite shot down here. See that explosion that's happening down there. This is in uh, Japan. Wow. So now look in here in Japan. See, this is where I believe it's it's happening right here or so. And that's offshore here. So there's uh, some activity happening under under the earth, definitely. And uh, I just read something here off of uh, one of the volcano sites and stuff. It said something here on Greece. And I don't know if it's a rumor or what, but there's a lot of earthquakes happening here near Turkey and Greece and Iran. But they're saying, brother, you know, I just read what we were talking earlier. <clears throat> it said something about Greece that there's a, um, there's a slight hint that there might be a, a volcanic eruption that might happen in, in Greece. You know. Uh, not um, not too long ago, there's been a lot of tremors and signs of a volcano that's, that, that might happen. And this is where, where the area is in Greece. And it keeps changing because there's more earthquakes happening. I mean, this one just popped up here now. Look at that. A three or four offshore here. And look at this one. Though. This one just popped up too. And... Um, so it seems like, brother, there just seems like there's a lot of earthquakes and volcanoes happening as we speak. I mean, this is look, the red dots mean this, these are just happening right now. But they're saying that in Greece, there's an eruption or something happening that, that could be a, a volcano. They had one in 1950s, and they're keeping an eye on that. But there's a lot of shaking, rattling down here uh, happening a lot. Um, I'm trying to see down here as well. Oh, look. This one just popped up, brother. Uh, Peru. Yeah, this is in Peru. Um, this one just popped up um, not too long ago as, as we speak. Um, looks like it's a, um, a 4.7 that popped up just now as we speak. 
and then California just popped up here at 1.3, not too bad. But uh, this one is a pretty big one, a 4.7, which is close to a 5. And uh, you can see by the scales here, uh, this is what's happening. Hawaii, Big Island, uh, Peru is, is rattling right there, and um, Turkey and Greece. And it's just kind of ironic, brother, that uh, there's a lot of things happening right here in the Middle East, you know, with, with Israel and Iran, uh, uh, the wars and stuff like that. But uh, is there something you want to share? I know I've been doing the talking here. So. No, that's, no, that's good. It's good that you're talking. It's nice to hear your voice once in a while. <laughs> And, no, it's it, it's there's a lot of activity happening there. You know, what's on my mind too is that, you know, I know there's supposed to be somewhat of a truce right now over in Israel and uh, where they're fighting and stuff. I don't know why that is. Maybe they're loading up to redo something. Uh, I don't know if it's a truce between Israel or what, how it's going going down. I just kind of read something on the news about it real quick. Uh, you know, these are the these are the last days that we're dealing with people, and I think what we need to do is we need to step it up. You know, there's a good uh, a sister of mine that told me that she brought it to my attention, and I believe that she's pretty on the ball on this. That we need to start stepping up in these last days because I do feel an urgency in my spirit regarding uh, what the Lord wants us to do, and I think the Lord wants us to occupy. The word I'm getting right now is giving me he says, "I want you to occupy, occupy. I want you to be on that wall to stand." To stand and go forward, but to wait on to wait on my instructions before you go forth. Hmm. And I believe this is very important that we stand and we wait for the Lord's direction. Because a lot of times, like my brother had spoken earlier over me today, he says you're to stand and you're, and you're to wait, wait on the Lord. And this is so good. And the Lord's just telling me, he says, you know, you've heard that word this morning. This is a word I want you to uh, to to glare out on everybody out there. The Lord says He knows that you've been striving in different areas in your life. And he says, you need to strive because I have a complete control in my hand. I have complete control, and I'll, sh I'll shift it in an instant when I feel it's time to be shifted. So just wait on me and be at peace with me and let me take care of it for you. So I just I have an urgency in my spirit, but is that we all of us, and you're involved in your finances and you're worried about what's going to happen. You have you have many business opportunities and different roads to, to challenge or to go into, but the Lord is saying, no, stay where you are and wait for me to make the direction for you. Oh, that's a good one, brother. And, and in, in regards to, to, uh, to relationships, the Lord is saying, listen, I want you to just trust in me. I don't go walk by faith and not by sight. Hmm. What you see is not of me. What you do is you walk by the faith that I put in your heart, by putting your in, in your in the word, and I want you to walk by my faith. Because when you walk by my faith, you will not you will not misstep, you will not trip over. You will do what I want you to do. He says the evil one is stepping up right now. He is stepping up to try to take you off your course. He's there to try to push you away with, for for your blessing to come through. Hmm. That's a good one. This is what my brother spoke earlier today, and the Lord's telling me to, to follow up on that. And my brother spoke this over me today, and then we thank you, brother. But this is so true that the evil one is doing that. He's trying to throw you off your course, because if he does that, then he has his foot pulled back like he was. But apparently, the Lord's showing this, the, the evil one had his foothold. It was there at one time, and it was pushed back by prayer. And now he's trying to step up more. He's trying to put his foot back into that into that hole and try to take over that foothold and take his place again. The Lord says, "Don't don't listen to him. Don't listen to the lies of the evil one. Don't listen to him because they're all lies. I will show you the way. I will direct your path. Just trust in me." Hmm. Hmm. And as as my brother's saying that, um, <clears throat> just looking at the news, uh, you know, there's there's definitely a lot of things happening. Um, Looking over in Crisis Boom, uh, there is there's some uh, articles here that are happening, and, and it just shows you that the last days. I mean, uh, the U.S. has this uh, new weapon here. It's called a heat wave, right, brother? A uh, heat wave yes. that, that that's happening here in the Middle East, and and then also not only that, but we've been talking a lot about the solar flares and stuff. Now they're saying that. The solar flares will continue pounding this earth until 2014. We're praying, we're praying that the Lord will come even before that or even, or perhaps this year. But they're saying this is going to be happening uh, continuously because the sun is basically falling apart and uh, the rays are getting even stronger. And then 
China is uh, boosting up their military spending. So, so with all the uh, <clears throat> the money that they're getting, and China is becoming a very prosperous country, they're um, they're uh, boosting up their military, and that's what's happening right now. Uh, their military is getting larger. They're they're um, getting prepared for something, and uh, we don't know, but uh, I have a hunch of it. But but that's what's happening there. And then Iceland, uh, Greenland, uh, we know that their ice is melting. We, we mentioned that before, but, but it's getting really bad now. So they're saying uh, it's about, a, was it 1.6 degrees globally melted, which is a big percentage in Iceland uh, to be melting. Global warming or whatever you call it, but it's melting. And then North Korea, it says that North Korea uh, is um, preparing... A threat, and it says probably more big of a threat than Iran. Uh, so North Korea is coming back in action there. So I'm not sure exactly what's happening, but that's happening there. And uh, <clears throat> looking at the solar storms, they're saying that uh, that it's going to probably disrupt more more uh, things here. So that's what's happening in, in the world. But you know what, brother? It seems like it just Going quicker and quicker and quicker with everything happening. Acceleration. Uh, yeah, acceleration. Yeah, I it's, mean, that's the Lord saying right now. There's there's a huge acceleration happening. That's right. But he says uh, when he, that acceleration that you see, he'll he'll triple his acceleration towards it. That's right. That's right. Mm. Oh, that's right. Mm. That's right. I, I feel I feel some prophetic here. What, how about you? Brother? Yeah, go ahead, brother. Uh, there's a couple out of uh, Missouri, and the Lord is telling me to let you know that He knows there's He knows that there's been a division in your, in your family, and your name is Mark and Linda, and Mark and Linda He's going to heal that family, that division in your family. He sees that uh, there was things said when when children were younger. And I don't know how this plays out. That's between you and the Lord. But he said that there was things that were said when children were younger and uh, somebody took it the wrong way. And there's been a division in this family over this one uh, a saying over this child. And the Lord says he's going to heal the, the, all those past, uh, that past uh, uh, relationship where there's, there has been no talking. There's been uh, more of a silence towards the, the, the other family members. The Lord wants to heal that right now. But he, all he wants from you it's just to surrender and to surrender those thoughts that overcame you and that you were uh, really concerned about and, that, and you feel like that, that they put you down. The Lord says he wants to heal that, but he needs you just to surrender. Wow. Wow. Wow, there's a, there's a lot of relationship things that are happening, my brother. Well, it's not, it's just, you know, it, it, that's so true, but I mean, I, I've experienced it some, from time to time, but it just seems like the evil ones, he, he wants to tear down anything that has to do with the beginning of a family or beginning of a relationship or families that are already intact, maybe young ones or loved ones. He just wants to tear it because once he gets a foothold in this, he can tear down anything. That's right. If he gets a foothold in a family, he'll tear it down. And then it, it just it's like a domino. You know what a domino effect is? Yeah. Once you hit a domino, just keep going down, bum, 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 bum. And he goes all the way down to future generations. But let's see. Well, we have the authority to step out and say we rebuke this and we pour the blood of Jesus on us. Stop it in this generation right now. Stop That's it right. upon our children. That's right. You have the authority to speak over this. You know, my brother, we talked about this. I don't know. Did you have something else to go about? No, no. Go ahead, brother. So we talked, both of you and I were, were discussing about angels, if we could dispatch them to our right. situation. And uh, I did some research myself to find out because I wasn't too sure on that. And uh, I did find uh, 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 something regarding that. And I think you did too, brother. And uh, the thought that came to me one day, and I was, I was sitting, I was at a, at a stoplight. And I go, Lord, can I dispatch your angels to help me in whatever circumstance I'm going through? And he let me know that because uh, 
Uh, remember when the 40 days and 40 nights when, when Jesus went up to, 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 to in the wilderness? Right. You know, Satan told Jesus, you can dispatch your angels. Wow. And God will send them. He will, you know, God will send his angels to you. But my thought was, if you're grafted into Christ, and Christ says you do greater things than I, don't you stay have the same authority as Jesus Christ to call on the angels, but ask God in Jesus' name, Lord God, can you bring those angels to me to help me in my circumstance? Can you help release that, that, that gift that's coming from heaven, that blessing from heaven, and break off that, that spiritual angel, that demonic angel, and stop him off, and then push him aside so you can deliver that blessing into your life? Wow. Check it up. Did you say it was in, what was it, Exodus, or where was it was at? Um, I believe that uh, as far as the angels, um, uh, that was Daniel, I think that scripture. Was it Daniel? Uh, yeah. That was when, when Daniel was praying. It says that he fasted for 21 days uh, for an answer from the Lord. And uh, it says that uh, the Gabriel was coming down to deliver the message. And uh, he was, he was when he came down, he was worried, meaning that it was like he'd been through a lot of fights or whatever, tired from that. And he said that uh, what happened was I was coming here. The Lord heard your prayer from day one. But he said the Prince of Persia stopped him from coming. And then he had to send Michael, Michael the archangels, to come to fight, to whatever, do you know the battle with it. And then he came to deliver a message. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sen sensing what's happening, folks, is uh, there's a lot of <clears throat> relationship problems happening here. There's a lot of fight going on, a lot of things going on. And in the spiritual realm, but as well as the physical realm. So there's a lot of things happening here in the world with, with Israel and Middle East right now and our families. But then also there's happening a lot in the spiritual realm as well. So something's guaranteed. And, and the results of that, brother, is, is, is we're having all these, these things are happening to the earth as well. Physical signs. So, and You know, as you're saying this, the Lord's showing me a vision right now. And that vision is just, they're fighting in the heavens right now. Yeah. As we're speaking, there's what's going on in the heavens. Whoa. I see like angels, archangels battling deeps right now. He's showing me in the spirit. There's a war going on right now in the heavens. There's wars down here too that we can't see with our human eye, but we can sense with our spirit that something right. happens. Oh. God. It's going to be angels to be against you, too. And sometimes I think we need to distinguish what is of the Lord and what's not of the Lord. What angel is that? That's is that right. angel of God or is right. that angel of the evil one? And in the heavens, I think they're trying to distinguish that right there. I mean, I think a lot of them want to come down. The morning angels want to come down here. And I think a lot of the heavenly angels are stopping them right there before they get down to, to try to do to. to, to Hurt a lot of people to know the Lord, God's people, his own people. Just defeat them right then and there before they even get to earth. There's already set angels here, and they're already warring the evil one, but the Lord has his own angels battling there too. But it seems like there's a war that's going down here big time on earth, and there's a there's a war going on in the heavens. That's right. Um, brother, do you feel that in your spirit? Yeah, or yeah. Is that just me? No, definitely. There's there's some. Um... Definitely a lot of warfare happening in in the physical and the spiritual. Definitely in the spiritual. And some of you prophetic people out there can confess and notice that there's some some activity happening. And uh, it affects, you know, what happens in the spiritual realm affects in the natural realm as well. So, um, you know, I don't I don't have time to explain the whole. Theology on that, but there's there's a battle happening right now, and, and things like things are closing to the end. But when, when things increase like that, that means things are about to happen. And, and that's, that's my you know, brother. Can, I don't know. If, can you hear me still? Can you yeah. still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, brother. Uh, I lost the video here, but uh, one of the things the Lord, the Lord has shown me is that you know they are fighting in the heavenlies, you know, and things are stepping up. The things are like you said earlier. Things are accelerating, people. And we got to be aware of these things, and we need we need to step up. 
And you know, a lot of a lot of preachers in the pulpit are, are preaching a candy coat of gospel, and they need to preach about revelations, what's going on right now. Because if we don't, we're going to be out there. We're not have any any uh, tools of battle to Amen. battle. Amen. Amen. I, I agree with that. Uh, we need tools now to battle those principalities and powers. That means that you don't go running to the to, to the to heavenlies to fight. Who am I going to fight right now? No, I'm talking about in your own family. I'm talking about in your own backyard. You don't have to worry about going over to Iran or Israel. Or you got them here in front of you. That's right. When you wake up each morning, whatever comes against you, that's a battle right there. The Lord wants you to deal with. Because when you can deal with that one, then the Lord can make you take you to another area to fight off these demons. That's right. And I'm not really into you know get into the demons thing and all that, but I just feel a sense in the spirit that a lot of people are battling with their finances and relationships right now. And they're not knowing where to turn, and they want to get wisdom. They want to get the discernment. And right now, the Lord says, "I just want you to stand. I want you to defend yourself. But you, how you defend on yourself is to call on me. Ooh. Put on the armor. That's right. Put on the armor first before you go out to battle. Stand at the wall. Be that watchman on my on, 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 on that night watch and that day watch." Ooh. And you know what, um, brother? You know, we, we showed the one video about um, uh, the lady rebuking the uh, tornado. And I think that what the Lord's saying is that we need to take authority over the situation we're going through right now. Because there's a battle happening in our situation. Sometimes the Lord just wants us to fight and sharpen our swords yeah. and take authority regarding a situation. Like my before we got on the air, my brother was being attacked. That's right. And he had to take authority over certain things. And uh, mm -hmm. that's what we need to do. We need to take authority over uh, our circumstances because the enemy will come and he'll take you out. And, and one thing people need to remember, you can call on the angels to help you out. That's what they're here for, to help you out. If that's not true, then why would they give you two guardians? That's right. So in other words, you have, you have two angels to help you. So, okay, maybe one for discernment. The other one to show you, you know, how to battle. I mean, that could be the sermon. The other one could be to, to help you war in the flesh towards it or war the spirit towards it. And the Lord has given you gifts from heaven to use that, whether you speak in tongues, whether you're, uh, you have belief in God or to, to work um, uh, uh, wonders in your life, signs and wonders. And, and the Lord is using us in the last day. And he's using anybody that's willing right now. That's one thing the Lord showed me. I'm not going to go after people that know it all. I'm going to go after people that don't know anything. I'm going to use them. All they have to do is have a humble heart before me. Because when they have that humble heart before me, then I'm able to use them and do what I want to do. If the Lord has a smart person saying, well, I'm going to do it this way, and I'm going to have it this way, the Lord can't use it ineffectively. It can use somebody they can mold and use that way. Are you moldable? To if you are, then let him do what he has to do in your life. But I, I, I just, and brother, I'm not trying to bring this, you know, right? I think I just see in the church today, everybody's te teaching about. You know, I, I believe in prosperity like the next guy, okay? I'm not against it. But you're teaching that over what's happening in the world, in the spirit world right now. That's you're right. going to teach people how to defend themselves. It's not about making money to live in a nice home across the street over there, wherever it is, a nice neighborhood, or have a beautiful car that costs you $80,000 or whatever it is. But going going against the heavenlies and, and, and going against the principalities and powers of the air. And that can be in your own backyard. You don't have to go to Washington. You don't have to go to Israel. You don't, it could be in your own family. You got to speak authority over it. And the Lord's just showing you know, you know what's good. Good, uh, with, you know, you're saying this, Paul, but I want you to start using that in your own life too. And Father, I ask forgiveness for not doing that. I ask forgiveness for not uh, coming and, and getting myself prepared. But the Lord is showing me now: get yourself prepared. You know what to do. I told you what to do. You put on that armor and go forth. So I ask for all the warring people out there, men and women, to put on your your your, uh, your, your, uh, your, your armor and go forth mm. and fight. Mm. And you know, and, and just to, to add on to that word, you know, um, just a couple days ago, I had a deal with a friend of ours, 
actually a person who uh, uh, who lost a, a son, and uh, this person, um, the father, was really upset or, or discouraged about his son losing his son, and, and basically he homeschooled his his son and tried to bring him up right and everything, and all of a sudden he he was overdosed with with uh, some drugs and he died basically. And, uh, you know, that's what my brother's saying, is that we need to take authority. We need to fight. We need to fight for our families, fight for your kids, you know, those of you who have kids out there, to fight for, against the warfare that's happening in your family, you know, because there's things happening. And I mentioned before, my brother, that, uh, <clears throat> you know, the enemy will attack your finances, he'll attack your relationship, and then, it, then he'll attack your belief system. He'll attack whether you should believe in God or not. And the first thing that would happen when things happen, if we're not prepared, we'll blame God regarding our finances. This has happened because of God. Uh, my marriage and, and my kids, the reason why it happens is of God. That's what the enemy would do, and that's what he's doing. But if you, you need to stand and you need to take authority. I, you know, I'm so glad we saw that. We showed that video on that. The lady rebuking the, the, the uh, tornado stuff. And it just reminds me that we need to start speaking it. And we need to take authority regarding that. We need to start sharpening the swords against things that come against. Hmm. Well, you know, I think we should go to Galatians, brother, or Ephesians. Put, put on the armor of God. It's yeah, Ephesians. That, yeah, it? it's Ephesians chapter 6. Yeah, I, I, here it is. Thank you, brother. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord. In the strength of his power, put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of, of blood and flesh, against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places, just as I was telling you guys before. It's happening right now in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand in all on, on that evil on that evil day. Stand firm, stand therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist. The belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness, the breastplate of righteousness, and the shoes for your feet to put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, which, with which you will be able to quench the flaming arrows of the evil one. And those flaming arrows, arrows, brother, that could be for the things that are happening in your life and circumstances. Circumstances, the things that would come against you, maybe a, uh, maybe a, a something in your finances where you weren't able to pay the bills, or maybe uh, having to do with a family member, or they're not responding, and they're doing something off the wall that, that's that's against God or you. And, uh, you know, you, those are the things I'm talking about, the fiery, uh, flaming arrows of the evil one. And then he says, take the helmet of the salvation and sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And he says, this is really important. You know, I, boy, this is, uh, you, uh, sometimes a person forgets this, but it's so important. Pray in the spirit at all times, in every prayer with supplication, to that, to that end, keep alert and always uh, persevere in supplication all the saints. In other words, praying for your brothers and sisters because they're going through these things. And you may be, you may have the mind where you can see what's going on in, in a brother or sister's life, but they don't see. So instead of telling them about it, you say, Lord, you got to help my brother or sister here because they don't see what's coming against them. So for everybody out there right now, in the name of Jesus, and I ask if the brother and sister or person out there cannot see the evil one come against them, we pray for the downfall of that demon to come to, to be loose, loose from them and cast to the bottomless pit where they belong. We speak authority. We speak for the one out there throughout the world. We speak against the principalities and powers of the air. We fight that question against principalities and powers in Jesus' name. Wow. Wow. That's heavy, brother. And I just, you know, it's, brother, we didn't even plan this talking about uh, fighting against principalities and no, powers, but no, we didn't. it's just the Lord. That's what he, the Lord wants all of us to know. Listen, you're not fighting against the flesh and blood that you see before you, that person across from you. 
You think you're fighting against them. What you're fighting is, is, is behind them. That spiritual person behind them has come down to, de to deceive you. That, that spiritual demon is going, no, it's not me, it's not me. It's that person in front of you, it's that flesh, that person, that's your boss, that's your relative, that's your friend, that's whoever. That's the fact that he's alive. If you push your friend away, you'll see that evil one come. And that's the have to go And how you do is you speak the blood of Jesus upon that demon. Because any demon that, 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 that hears the blood of Jesus poured on it, he doesn't want to have anything to do with that because he knows what that blood feels like. That, I mean, that blood is kind of like a law like, like a, like a over a spirit. It's like hell just going upon it and just bearing it and taking it apart. See a person offend you in some way, or it's just not right, you know. You've got to the authority of Jesus Christ and the blood of plead the blood of Jesus over it. When you do that and you speak the written that it is written, and you speak the blood of Jesus upon it, it has no part to go but down into the pit where it belongs. You just gotta remember that. I know it's hard to do it because it's hard for me to do it when they're a lot of times, you know. A lot of things come against me and I don't see it right away. It's not until after the fact. But that's how you grow from faith. You keep practice and you keep on making those mistakes until finally you get it. That's right. And then you go. Oh. So what you got there, brother? Uh, not much, man. I just, uh, you know, I just, I just sense that, uh, you know, what we, we need to do is also we need to just speak the word over us, like Psalms 91, mm. and declare it over us, as, you know, upon uh, each person, each household, mm. each block, um, regarding that situation and, and circumstances and stuff. You know, usually I... Um, Sometimes the battle is not somewhere else. The battle is in our homes. It's in our places where we live um, that we need to take authority of. Mm -hmm. And um, the whole thing is, we know for a fact is that we'll, the Bible says that we will win. And uh, toward the end, and the Lord's coming. That's all I can say is the Lord's coming, folks, and to be prepared when He comes. You know, I like uh, what this one preacher said. He said that just do what God tells you to do and let the consequences be done to him. Meaning that if he tells you to do something, just do it. If he tells you to speak out, to say it, say it. And let the actions be done unto him. And of course, you know, he won't let you do anything that's contrary to the word. But uh, the actions, you know, stuff, what comes after that will be up to him what he does and all I can say is that Jesus is coming you know what the Lord just showed me right now you know and this is I don't know if a lot of people understand that what I'm about to say when you are broken when you're truly broken before the Lord that's when he comes so close to you because he knows what that feels like that brokenness and it's like it's another it's another uh, realm of, of, of closer intimacy when you're broken like that. I mean, I've been I've been broken like that many many times. I'm sure you have too, brother. And it, it, I mean, I mean, I there's times that I can pray, Lord, break me. That's right. Break me. That's right. And I was like asking to break me so I can never forget where I started out. Wow. Was with the Lord. The Lord wants us to, to remember that. Because a lot of times we get involved in ministries. We get the prophetic. We get the healing the Lord puts on us. He uses us through putting the prophetic and the healing and the words of knowledge and seeing people and all that, seeing through people, being a seer and all that. But he always, always wants us to remember when I first started with you. You were you were nothing to where you are right now. That's right. So it's sometimes it's good to be broken, ask the Lord to break you, because when he breaks you, you're closer to him. And then sometimes it seems like he puts more of a deeper anointing on you, 
to have you more of a sensitive heart to people out there that are hurting. And I think, you know, it's like the two greatest commandments to Lord says, love me with all your heart, soul, mind, spirit, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And I've said this before, but, you know, Lord, it's hard to love myself. How can I love my neighbor? So sometimes the Lord needs to do a little uh, readjustment or a cleansing or a cleanup. But when he does and he breaks you like that, you come back with a different attitude towards people. You know, and, and brother, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll make this real quick. But, you know, I went, I went to pray over a person this week. And, uh, and the, you know, I, was, I knew this person, but this person would always run up to me and ask for prayer all the time, right? Uh-huh. And this person came up to me, I felt kind of like, again? Mm. And the Lord dealt with me right then and there. And that's why I'm talking about being broken. Wow. So I never want to see you get like that where you can't pray for people. So, Father, I even ask again, I ask your forgiveness for not looking at that person with your eyes. Yeah, me too. And I know the Lord wants us to remember that, to look at that person that's like your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, somebody really close to you, and pray for them in that way. For when you when you when you break yourself like that, you're just being just like Christ is. Because that's what, that's what, you know, a good a thing that reminds me, a good point reminds me of is remember when, when all those guys were there, women and men were ready to stone that woman because she was an adulteress? Right. And she spit over, and I don't know what he wrote in the sand, in the dirt. He was writing dirt, and he says, if anybody be without sin, let him cast the first stone. And everybody started dropping their rocks to the ground. And they all walked away because they were so uh, guilty in their own lives. And they all walked away, and he looked at the woman and says, woman, I don't see your accusers, and neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more. And I think the Lord wants us to remember that. That we're all sinners before him. All of us, from top to bottom, from different creed, different religions, from all walks of life. That's about it, bro. Mm. Mm, that's good, brother. Wow. What's a heavy broadcast, brother? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't plan it to be this way. Just, you know, the Lord's like <laughs> that. You know, we don't even know what to talk about here, you know? Yeah. And the Lord fight that. He just has his own agenda. You know, brother, you brought up something. This is off the subject. You brought up something. You know, it's easy for us to, pr to pray for a brother and sister and see something happen for him. But when we ask God to help us, we can't see the answer. That's right. Right away. I mean, sometimes the Lord will show us. But not right, right when we want it, it seems like it's not there. And a lot of times we'll, we'll press in. Well, Lord, come on, give us an answer. Give me an answer. Give me an answer. And he won't show you anything. But then he'll use a brother or a sister and they'll speak it over you, and you go, wow, I understand. Yeah, he showed me this and showed me that, and you'll understand it. Yeah. When you ask him for it, it doesn't seem like, for me, I don't know, for me it doesn't come like instantaneously. It takes until I press in and press in and press in and search it out. That's right. And finally says, and then like you have given me a word this morning, which is a beautiful word, one of the best words I've probably ever had, even more so than a, than a prophet out there that, you, pay, you have to pay 60 bucks to go see or whatever. <laughs> you give me a word like that, and the Lord just showed me different people that had, had spoken these things over me, and when you spoke, it just came together. Wow. Wow. I, I, I think, you know, folks, what, 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 what my brother's talking about is, <clears throat> you know, we all need each other. You know, like um, and what my brother's saying is that sometimes when you pray for yourself, you won't get the answer, but when you pray for someone else, uh, you have the answer for that some else. You get words right away. And it's it's good. Sometimes the Lord just does that, I guess, to humble us and saying that, you know, um, we need each other. And, uh, you know, folks out there, you've just tuned in, you know, just want to let you know that, we're, you know, we don't uh, hate anybody. We love everybody. Jesus loves everybody. 
regardless, you know, if they wear a different skin or different religion or whatever. I mean, we, we love who it is, but I'll tell you something is, is the, the enemy will come and uh, we wrestle with spiritual warfare. Not that person. He says not flesh and blood, but person. He says it's the spirit behind that. That's what my brother's talking about, and we're talking about. So, uh, and we we want uh, to to tell you about that to to take authority of your household and pray because Jesus is coming. Cool. cool. You getting something, there, brother? Yeah, I'm just thinking about the churches. Wow. I'm thinking about the churches. You know, we go to church on Sunday or Saturday night, whatever it is, and we're, you know, we're always asking for the glory of God to fall. And, and the Lord just shows me that, you know, I want, I want to heal the, 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 the broken, the wounded. Huh. Well, excuse me, not broken, the walking wounded that come into the church. Hmm. You can have a beautiful car and a beautiful home, a beautiful situation, a beautiful family and everything. But you walk into the church and you're the walking wounded. You say, how am I the walking wounded? What's on your heart today? What's hurting you? What's holding you back from giving all that you can to the Lord? If God were to take it all from you, all of it, where would you be? Where's your God there? Your God is right before you within your heart when you call on it. You say, Lord Jesus, the Son of the living God, I love you with all my heart, my soul, my mind, my spirit, and my strength. And without you, God, I can do nothing. That is your first love. And God's there to, to, to heal the walking wounded in the church. And every day, brother, that I go into a different type of church, and when I do go, and not every day, but every Sunday or whatever during the week, when I go into different churches, I see the walking wound. The Lord always shows me walking wound. He shows me, Paul, I want you to pray for that woman. Paul, I want you to pray for that man. Paul, I want you to pray for that young man. Paul, I want you to pray for that young woman right there. They are my walking wounded. Don't you see them with my eyes, my son? Look at them with my eyes, not with yours. Sometimes you don't need to go up and, and lay hands on them. You can just say that prayer right there where you're, where you're, where you're at and just pray over them. Go ahead, bro. So we pray for everybody who wants, who wants to accept you as Lord and Savior. Just say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Forgive me my sins. Forgive me my sins. I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I'm a sinner. And I give you my life. And I give you my life. Lord, I believe that you died and rose again. Lord, I believe that you died and rose again. And you're taking us home. And you're taking us home. And today I give you my life. Today I give you my life. So I can be with you forever. So I can be with you forever. And Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. And Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. So I may know your perfect will. So I may know your perfect will. In Jesus' name I pray. Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Oh. So, on that note, everybody, we, this time we're going to say it seven times. We learned something this week. <laughs> the Jewish, uh, well, they declare prayer over people. We bless, bless you. you. We, we bless you. you. We, we bless, bless you. you. We bless 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 you. Oh. Was that seven time run?